We present John Moffat as Hercule Poirot and Stephanie Cole as Ariadne Oliver in Agatha Christie's Halloween Party. Halloween Party? I thought that sort of thing only happened in America. Goodness, no. You lead such a sheltered life, Ariadne. Haven't you seen all the witches' hats in the shops? Anyway, I promised Rowena Drake that I'd lend a hand, and I did kind of hint that you might be going. I hope you didn't make any rash promises on my behalf, Judith. I don't want to find myself presenting the prize for the best pumpkin. I didn't promise anything. Well, she knows your books, of course. So many people do. I thought it might provide you with a story. Mummy, I'm sure my temperature's gone down. There's nothing wrong with me at all. I'm sure I shall be fine by this evening. Can't I go? Half an hour ago, it was 102. You can't have recovered just like that. Back to bed, Miranda. But everyone else will be going. Well, they'll just have to do without you. Off you go. Mrs Holt will bring you a cup of tea. Come on, Ariadne. I promised Mrs Drake we'd be there by three. And I'm not expected to do anything? Nothing at all. Just think of it as the background for one of your murder stories. I'm so glad you were able to come, Mrs Oliver. And it was so good of you to agree to judge the girls' fancy dress competition. They'll be so thrilled. Fancy dress? But I understood that I wasn't going Where to be asked... Where are you going to have a snack, Dragon, Mrs. Dray? In the dining room. I'd best get something to cover up the table, then. There's a green baize cloth in the cupboard in the kitchen. Oh, I, th- I thought we'd hang those fairy lights all the way around the landing, Mrs. Drake. Will that be all right? You're not going to hammer any nails in? Oh, no, we'll just tie them up. Yes. Is there anything I can do to help? Gracious no, Mrs. Oliver. Why don't you find Where's a chair? Where's the for apples going to be? In the library. Mrs. Minden's gone off to find a really solid bucket, one that won't fall over. This is Ariadne Oliver, Miss Whittaker. How do you do? Miss Whittaker teaches at the Elms. That's the school most of the girls go to. How do you do? You know, I've never understood what apple bobbing had to do with Halloween. It doesn't seem appropriate somehow. Apples were supposed to be associated with happy souls. You were given an apple to keep the evil spirits away. Evil spirits? Halloween was the night when the force of evil was at its most powerful, when witches were free to consort with the devil. And in this part of the world, they used to hold a Sabbath at the old stone circle at Kilterbury. Kilterbury Ring. For on I must leave, the night I shall ride, and all our nine folds sweeping on by our side. Are you going to tell the girls' fortunes this year, Mrs Goodbody? Well, I don't do the telling exactly. I give them a mirror, and they see the face of the man they're going to marry. Oh, that's what that ingenious contraption is that Nick is rigging up. It's to project pictures onto the mirrors. Are you the lady that writes the detective books? Yes, that's right. I read one of them once, The Dying Goldfish. I thought it was quite good. Thank you, dear. I thought it was a bit tame, really. Only one murder. One murder is generally quite enough for most people. I saw a murder once. Don't be silly, Joyce. Did you really? Did you really and truly see a murder? Of course she didn't, Anne. Don't say silly things, Joyce. I did see a murder. I did, I did, I did. Murder will out. That's what they say. What kind of murder? Why didn't you go to the police? Because I didn't know it was a murder when I saw it. It really wasn't until a long time afterwards that I began to see it was a murder. Something that somebody said only a month or two ago suddenly made me think. Of course, it was a murder. And when did you see this, my dear? Years ago. I was quite young at the time. I don't believe it. You're making it up. Of course she's making it up. She's always making things up. I'm not making it up, Leopold. I swear it. That's quite enough, Joyce. Why don't you tell us about it, then? I brought the apples, Mrs. Drake. Where do you want them? In the library, please, Mrs. Minden. Right. Just a minute. I can never resist an apple. They're my besetting sin. And they help to keep the evil spirits at bay. Mm, <laughs> delicious. I'd better go and see where the boys are going to hang the pumpkins. <laughs> it's pumpkin night tonight. It's pumpkin night tonight. Give us a candle. Give us a light. It's pumpkin night tonight. <laughs> it's pumpkin <laughs> night tonight. It's pumpkin night tonight. Give us a candle. Give us a light. It's pumpkin night tonight. Hercule Poirot speaks. Oh, thank goodness for that. I felt sure you'd be bound to be out. No, my dear Ariadne, I am having a quiet evening all by myself. Look, I'm in a terrible state. Yes, I can hear that. What is the matter? It, it's too difficult to tell you on the phone. Can I come round and see you straight away? You're the only person who might know what to do. Now, come and sit yourself down. Oh. 
Uh, may I get you something to drink, a little cognac? I don't drink. Surely you haven't forgotten. No, I've not forgotten, but I thought it might do you good. No, no, I don't want anything, really. Then calm yourself. And tell me what it is that has upset you. Well, it all began with a party, a Halloween party. Do you know what that is? I know what Halloween is. The last night in October when the witches ride on their broomsticks. There was a witch. She was called Mrs Goodbody, but I don't remember a broomstick. It all started with the apples. Apples? Bobbing for apples. It's one of the things you do at a Halloween party. Ah, yes, I think I have heard of that. The party ended with a snapdragon. Snapdragon? You know, burning raisins in a dish. Mm -hmm. I suppose that must have been when it happened. When what happened? The murder. Everyone went home after the snapdragon, and that was when they couldn't find her. Find whom? A girl called Joyce. Everyone went round the house calling for her. We found her in the end, in the library. That's where they'd been bobbing for apples. What had happened? You know, I think I might take a little brandy after all, just a little. I mean, we, of course. Someone had shoved her head down and held her there until she drowned in a galvanised iron bucket full of water. It was, it was horrible. Not at all like the way murder happens in my books. I never want to see an apple again. Here? It will do you good. Oh, thank you. Mm. Oh. Now, when did all this happen? And where? Last night, at a place called Woodley Common. Woodley Common. Now, why does that name seem familiar to me? I was staying with a friend, Judith Butler. She's a widow. I went on an Hellenic cruise last year. She was there, too. We got to know one another, and she asked me to come and stay at her house. And I was invited to this... Halloween party. It was for young teenagers, really. Sort of celebration for the girls who had passed their 11 plus. Did any of the people who were there know who you were? Oh, yes. One of the children said something about my writing books and they started talking about murder. And that's what led up to the thing... to the thing that made me come to you. And what is that? Joyce said, I saw a murder once. And somebody said, don't be so silly. And one of the girls said she was making it up. But she insisted she'd seen it. Had she told anyone about it? Her parents? Uh, did she go to the police? No. No, the other girl asked her that, and she said, because I didn't know at the time it was a murder. Hmm, a very interesting reason. And do you yourself think that she really had seen a murder? It's the only way that her death makes sense, that there was a murder and that she was a witness to it. But that would mean, would it not, that the murder was committed by one of the people at the party? Yes, but it wasn't at the party that she said it. It was in the afternoon when everyone was getting it ready. You, you don't think I'm just imagining things, do you? What other reason could there have been? A girl was murdered, murdered by someone who had strength enough to hold her head down in a bucket of water. An ugly murder. And a murder that was committed with no time to lose. Somebody thought they were threatened and struck as soon as it was humanly possible. Joyce could not have known who it was that committed the murder. I mean, she wouldn't have said what she did if she knew the murderer was in the room with her. And how many people were there? Oh, it's difficult to say. Everyone was rushing about doing things. Fifteen, perhaps, could have been more. And where did you say this was? Woodley Common. It's not that far away, 30 or 40 miles from London. Ha! Huh. Now I remember why the name is familiar to me. And why is that? A very old friend of mine, Superintendent Spence, went to live there when he retired from the force. Hmm. How do you think he might possibly be able to be of assistance to us? So you want me to find out exactly who were at the party? And at the preparation for it. Mm -hmm. And I want to know all about them. Anything you can tell me. Well, I've only been down here a year... It's not a big community. My sister's been here longer. She might be able to help. Mm -hmm. I can guess pretty well already who would have been at the party itself. A preponderance of women on the whole. Men don't turn up much at children's parties. Well, the doctor would have been there, and the vicar, I suppose, and young Nicholas Ransom, and his friend from college, Desmond. Uh, You've absolutely ruled out any sexual motive for the killing. Uh, how old was the girl? Twelve or thirteen. Mm. It's just that this boy Desmond was remanded for a psychiatrist's report some time ago. May have been nothing in it. Otherwise, as I say, they'd be women. Mothers, aunts, helpers. 
Oh, there'd be Miss Emlyn, who runs the village school, and her assistant, Miss Whittaker. Rather a peculiar lady, I've always thought. But I don't see any of them as likely murderers. I suspect that what we are looking for is an unlikely murderer. Ah. Someone who would never be suspected. Mm. Someone to whom it would come as a terrible shock to discover that there had been a witness to the crime. And that is another matter on which I shall need your valuable assistance. How do you mean? We have to find out what was the original crime. Now, I want to know what unexplained deaths there have been at Woodley Common over the last few years. Something that this child could have witnessed but not realized its true significance. A car accident where the driver might have gone directly for the victim. Tablet slipped into someone's tea. Someone who was pushed from a cliff. <laughs> there aren't any cliffs around here. No, 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 no. I was merely giving examples, Superintendent. <laughs> there are hosts of possibilities. Well, I'll do what I can. And I'll rope in Elspeth. Ah. There's nothing much that goes on around here that she doesn't know about. Why don't you come back here this evening and have a bite to eat with us? Oh, that would be very kind. And now... I must be on my way. <laughs> Mrs. Oliver is to take me to the scene of the murder. Mrs. Drake's house? You'll find it's got an uncannily appropriate name. And what is that? It's called Apple Trees. Yes, it has taken on a certain grim significance. It's such a dreadful thing to happen in one's own house. The whole thing seems completely incredible. The party was going so well. Do you have any theories about why the poor girl was murdered, Mrs. Drake? I'm certain that someone just walked into the house. Not a difficult thing to do under the circumstances. Someone of a highly disturbed mentality, I suppose. Anyone peeping in through the window could see there was a children's party going on. And this poor wretch, if one can really feel any pity for these people, enticed the child away somehow and killed her. Perhaps if you would be so good as to show me where... Of course. It happened in the library. I won't come with you if you don't mind. There's nothing to see now. This way, Mr. Poirot. Mm -hmm. The police seem to think that the murder must have taken place while the snapdragon was going on. That was in the dining room over there. All the lights had been switched off. The only thing you could see was the blazing dish. So that anybody might have slipped out. Exactly. This is the library. The bucket in which the poor girl was drowned stood about here. Ah. Now, I suppose there was uh, water, a good deal of water. There was water in the bucket, of course. I, I mean that if the child's head was pushed under water, there would have been a lot of water splashed about. Oh, yes. Even while the apple bobbing was going on, the bucket had to be filled up once or twice. So the person who committed the crime would have got wet. Yes, I suppose so. That was not specially noticed? No. Inspector Raglan asked me about it quite specifically. You see, by the end of the evening, nearly everyone was a bit dishevelled or damp or covered in flour. The police didn't seem to think there was any useful clue there. No, I suppose the only clue was the child herself. I hope you will tell me all you know about her. About Joyce? Mm, the victim is always important. The murdered person, you see, is often the cause of the crime. I suppose I see what you mean. Mrs Oliver is right. There is something creepy about this room now. Shall we go back and join her in the morning room? I suppose it was all my fault, really. If I hadn't been here, there wouldn't have been any talk about murder and none of this would have happened. Well, you are a very famous person, Ariadne. So, now you will tell us all about Joyce, Mrs Drake. I don't really know what you expect me to say. Surely it would be better to ask the poor girl's mother. Ah, but what I want is not a mother's estimate of a dead daughter but a clear, unbiased opinion from someone who has a great knowledge of human nature. Now, you have been an active worker in many social and welfare fields here, after all. Well, it is a little difficult. I mean, children of that age, she was 12 or 13, I think, are very much alike. Ah, surely there are very great differences in character and disposition. Did you like her? Well, of course I liked her. I like all children. Most people do. Mother, I do not agree with you. Some children I consider most unattractive. Was she a nice child or not a nice child? You must realise, Monsieur Poirot, the poor child is dead. Dead or alive, it matters. Perhaps if she had been a nice child, nobody would have wanted to kill her. But surely it isn't a question of niceness. It could be. I understand that she claimed to have seen a murder committed. Oh, that. But you did not take it seriously? Of course not. 
She was just showing off because Mrs Oliver was here. But she did insist that it was true. I don't believe it for one minute. It's the sort of stupid thing Joyce would say. She was a stupid girl? Well, she was the kind who liked to show off. She always pretended to have seen more and done more than all the other girls. What did the other children have to say about it? Were they impressed? They laughed at her. So, of course, that made it worse. Well, madame, I am glad to have your personal assurance on that point. It was all put on to impress people. Particularly me, I suppose. And now we must take our leave. Thank you so much for allowing me to view the scene of this very unpleasant occurrence. Au revoir, madame. Very unsuitable place for a murder, don't you think? No atmosphere, no haunting sense of tragedy, no character worth murdering. Hmm. I could not help feeling that just occasionally someone might feel like murdering Mrs Drake. She can be intensely irritating, so pleased with herself, so complacent. What is her husband like? Oh, she's a widow. Her husband died a year or two ago. He got polio and had been disabled for years. He was a banker originally, I think. Do you like Mrs Drake? Do you think she's a nice woman? You do ask the most embarrassing questions. Seems the only thing you're interested in is whether people are nice or not. Rowena Drake is the bossy type, likes running things and people. She runs the whole place, more or less. Now, tell me about the woman we are to see next, the mother of the unfortunate Joyce. Well, Mrs Reynolds. I don't really know her. Pleasant enough, rather stupid, I should think. I'm sorry for her, though. It's awful to have your daughter murdered. Everyone round here seems to think it was a sex crime, which makes it worse. But there was no evidence of sexual assault? No. People like to think these things happen. I don't see how it could have been anyone living round here. This is such a nice place. And the people living here are such nice people. It must have been a man who came in from the outside. A drug addict, probably. Now what makes you so sure it was a man? Oh, it must have been a man. I mean, you don't find women doing things like that. Joyce was only a child. Thirteen years old. No, I do not want to distress you by staying here too long, Mrs. Reynolds, or to ask you difficult questions, but I am trying to follow up a remark that your daughter made at the party. You were there yourself, I think. Well, no, I wasn't. I haven't been very well lately, and these parties can be very tiring. I drove the children there and came back to fetch them. My son Leopold was there, of course, and my elder daughter Anne. What was it Joyce said that you wanted to know about? She said that she had once seen a murder committed. Joyce? Oh, she couldn't have said a thing like that. She must have been joking. She was very positive. <laughs> she kept on saying that it was true and that she'd seen it. But if anything like that had happened, she'd have told me about it, wouldn't she? One would have thought so. She did not say... Anything about it at some time during the past? Huh? You might have forgotten. Especially if it was not really important. Not really important? I thought you said it was a murder. She said she didn't know it was a murder at the time. Well, when would this have been? Ah, this is one of our difficulties. It might have been three weeks ago or three years. She simply said she was quite young at the time. Now, can you think of anything that she might have seen? I can't imagine what she was talking about. I mean... You do hear of things, women being attacked and things like that, but I can't think of anything that Joyce could have come across. You say her brother and sister were at the party. Yeah. I wonder if we might speak to them. Oh, Anne isn't here at the moment. She's still at the school, but Leopold's upstairs in his room, second right at the top of the stairs. Who on earth could she see murdered? It was just like Joyce, that. What do you mean? Showing off. She'd say anything to get people to notice her. So you really think she invented the whole thing? I expect she just wanted to impress you a bit. Do you think anybody believed her? Shouldn't think so. Miss Whitaker just told her not to be silly, and Anne just laughed at her. Did she often tell stories like that? She was an awful show-off. She once told the girls at school she'd been to India with her uncle. Lots of them actually believed her. Who do you think killed your sister, Leopold? I can't imagine anyone wanting to kill her. I suppose someone who was just batty. Who else would want to do it? Oh, yes, I remember about her Indian story. 
Wasn't it you who told me, Elspeth? Mm, she really let herself go. There was a Maharaja and a tiger shoot and elephants. Every time she told anyone about it, she would add another tiger or another elephant. She was always telling tall stories. Ah, but that does not necessarily mean that every tale that she told was a lie. Well, I'd say the likelihood was it usually would be. And so she got herself killed. That's true enough. Mm. Who could she have seen murder? Nobody. And have there been any unusual or unaccounted for deaths? Well, I've done what you asked for, Poirot. I've jotted down a few names. Ha, unsolved murders? Uh, hardly as much as that. Just a few possibilities. Here. Ha. Mrs. Llewellyn Smythe, Leslie Ferrier, Janet White... Tell me about Mrs. Llewellyn Smythe. Oh, you might have something there. Her au pair girl went off one night and was never heard of again. She could have put something into her medicine easily enough. And she came into all the money, didn't she? Or that's what she thought. The au pair girl? Yes. But did anyone think at the time that there was anything suspicious about Mrs. Llewellyn Smythe's death? No, she got heart trouble on doctor attended her regularly. Yet you put her on your list. Well, she was a very wealthy woman, and though her death wasn't unexpected, it was sudden. I think the doctor was surprised. She came here when her health began to fail. Mm. She wanted to be near her niece and nephew, that's Mr and Mrs Drake. She bought Quarry House. Quarry House? After her death, it was bought by Colonel Weston and his wife. It's a big Victorian house with a disused quarry in the grounds. Ah. I think it was that which attracted her. She spent thousands of pounds turning the quarry into a sunken garden, or whatever you call it. Had a landscape gardener come over from Wisley to design it. It's quite a showpiece, really. I shall go and look at it. But tell me, what makes you suspect that the old lady might have been murdered? Well, the au pair, for one thing. Why? Well, she must have forged the will. Who forged it if she didn't? What forged will? Tell me. Mrs Llewellyn Smythe. There was, um, what do you call it? A uh, codicil. Mm. She'd made wills before. All much the same, bequest to charities, legacies to old servants. But the bulk of her fortune always went to her nephew and his wife. And this particular codicil? Left everything to the au pair girl. How long had she been with the old lady? Oh, just over a year. Exactly how old was Mrs Llewellyn Smythe? In her 60s. 65 or 6. Ho, ho. That is not so very old. <laughs> But I suppose that the family claimed that the balance of her mind had been disturbed, and that there had been undue influence. Well, it never came to that. The lawyers got onto the forgery pretty smartly. It seems it was not a very mm, convincing affair. It would have been easy enough for the au pair to have done it. Mrs. Llewellyn Smythe was very concerned about traditional values. She believed that personal letters should always be handwritten, but she suffered from severe arthritis, and so the au pair girl wrote a great many of her letters letters for her. Seems that the old lady told her to make the handwriting as much like hers as possible and even to sign it with her name. So when it came to forging the codicil, she must have thought she could get away with it. But the lawyers were too smart for her. These were Mrs. Llewellyn Smythe's own lawyers? Yes, Fullerton, Harrison and Ledbetter. In the high street. They'd always done her legal business for her. Now, the girl was questioned about the will and she obviously got the wind up. Just walked out one day, leaving most of her things behind her. They were preparing to take proceedings against her, but she didn't wait for that. She probably went back to her own country. Mm, a fascinating story, but I do not see what there was for Joyce to have seen. Now, what about this uh, Leslie Ferrier? Ah, now, he was a lawyer's clerk, worked for Fullerton, Harrison and Ledbetter, Mrs Llewellyn Smythe's lawyers. And what happened to Leslie Ferrier? He was stabbed in the back, not far from a pub called The Green Swan. He was supposed to be having an affair with the wife of the landlord. Five or six years older than he was, but she liked them young. They said he'd broken with her and gone off with some other girl. But who she was, no one ever discovered. And so who was the suspect, the husband or the wife? <laughs> Might have been either. The wife seemed the more likely. She was a very temperamental piece. But there were other possibilities. Leslie Ferrier had got into trouble when he was in his early twenties. Mm forgery and falsifying accounts. He went to prison for it. Fullerton, Harrison and Ledbetter took him on when he came out of prison. Ah, most commendable of them. And uh, did he lead a blameless life after that? Well, nothing was ever proved. But he had a lot of money in his bank account, paid in in cash. Nothing to show where it had come from. Mm, again, it does not sound like the murder we are looking for. Now, what about um, 
Janet White. Found strangled on a footpath, which was a shortcut from the school where she taught to her home. A friend of hers said she was very nervous about some man she'd broken off from a month or so before. He'd been sending her threatening letters, apparently, but no one found any trace of them, or of him, for that matter. I like this case better. For what reason? It is a more likely murder for a girl of Joyce's age to have witnessed. She could have recognised the victim, a school teacher whom she knew and who perhaps taught her. When was this murder? Ooh, two and a half years ago. Uh -huh, mm. That could be about the right time. She might have seen this man with his arms about Janet White without realising that he was strangling her. It was only much later that the true explanation came to her. Yes, 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 it is quite possible. Uh, what did you say was the name of the headmistress? Uh, Miss Emlyn. And she was also at the Halloween party? I believe so. Bon, then I shall pay her a visit. I shall, as you say, be killing the two birds with the one stone. There is no room for unnecessary sentiment about Joyce. It only clouds the mental faculties. Uh, to speak plainly, she was rather a mediocre child, neither stupid nor particularly intelligent. Her only outstanding characteristic was that she was a compulsive liar. She was deceitful? Oh, no, she didn't lie to avoid being found out or anything conventional like that. She boasted. She boasted of things that had not happened, but that would impress her friends. As a result, of course, no one was inclined to believe her. So you do not think that Joyce saw a murder committed at all? I should doubt it very much. She might have witnessed, perhaps, a car accident, or, or someone who was hit by a ball on the golf course. Something she could work up into an impressive happening that could just conceivably pass as an attempted murder. I believe that one of your own teachers a year or so ago was strangled by an unknown killer. Are you referring to Janet White? That is so. A strange, emotional girl. As far as is known, she was out walking alone. She may, of course, have arranged to meet some young man. She was a girl who was quite attractive to men in a modest sort of way. Her killer was never discovered. The police questioned various young men, or asked them to assist them in their inquiries, as they put it, but they were not able to find sufficient evidence to bring a case against anyone. An unsatisfactory business from their point of view, and, I may say, from mine. Did you know her well? Not particularly well. Not outside her work at the school. She wouldn't have confided in me, if that is what you mean. Is there anyone on your staff who would be able to help me? Well, her great friend here was Nora Ambrose, but she is no longer here. I think, perhaps, that you should talk to Miss Whittaker. She should be free in a few minutes. I presume that this is about the death of Joyce Reynolds, but I can't see exactly how you come into it. Through the police? No, not through the police, through a friend. So, what do you want to know? I don't think there is any need to tell you. I want to know about the Halloween party. You were there, I believe. Yes, I was there. It was a very good party. Well, at least it started out that way. Did you help out with the arrangements beforehand? I was there. But there was really very little to do. Mrs Drake had seen to everything. And then you came back to the party as one of the guests. That is right. And was there anything particular about the party which caught your attention? Anything that might have had a certain significance? <sighs> there was one thing, yes. At the end, they had a snapdragon. Do you know what I mean? Yes, I know. And what happened at the snapdragon? Oh, nothing happened there. But it was very hot in the room where it was happening, and I couldn't stand all the shrieking and the laughter, so I went out into the hall. It was then that I saw Mrs Drake coming out of the lavatory on the first floor landing. She was carrying a, a large vase of flowers... She stopped and looked over the well of the staircase towards the other end of the hall where there is a door leading to the library. The library. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Go on. She made a sudden movement as if something had startled her, so much so that she lost hold of the vase and it fell, it crashed down into the hall below, broke into smithereens. And what do you think had happened to startle her? I thought she had seen something. Such as? Well, it seems to me that she may have seen the door of the library opening from the inside. Nothing more than that? 
Oh, she may have seen someone she did not expect to see. Did you see anyone? No, I was not looking that way. Oh, but everything happened so quickly. I tried to help Mrs Drake mop up the water and sweep up the broken glass. But then the children started to come out of the Snapdragon room. And then shortly after that, the party came to an end. Did you ask Mrs Drake what it was that had startled her? I had no earthly reason to do so. If your hostess has been so unfortunate as to smash one of her best glass vases, it's hardly the part of the guest to ask, what on earth made you do that? Uh, no, quite so. And you could not have known at the time that behind the library door, Joyce was dead. Mm. So whoever it was that may have been in the library could have made their exit while the hall was full of people putting on their coats and saying goodbye. It was not until after the body had been found, I presume, Miss Whitaker, that you had time to reflect on what you had seen. That is so. And that, I'm afraid, is all I can tell you, and it may be a very foolish little matter. Mm, a moment before you go, mademoiselle. There is one little question I should like to ask you. What is it? How long have you been a teacher here? Just six years. Do you remember a girl who was a teacher here two years ago, Janet White? Janet White? But that has nothing to do with all this, surely. It could have. Did you know her well? Uh, well um, she wasn't a, a close friend, if that's what you mean. But, um, but I still don't see how this concerns Joyce Reynolds. She claimed to have seen a murder committed some years ago. Oh, that was just nonsense. I told her so. She, she was just showing off in front of Ariadne Oliver. I am not so sure. <clears throat> you do not think it could possibly have been the murder of Janet White which she witnessed? How did Janet White die? She was strangled walking home from school one night. Alone? Oh, probably not alone. But not with Nora Ambrose. What do you know about Nora Ambrose? Nothing as yet. But I should like to know. What were they like, Janet White and Nora Ambrose? <gasps> Oversexed. Um, but in different ways. Um, Janet, Janet seemed to become an utterly different person whenever there was a likely man around. I... No, but how could, how could Joyce have possibly seen the murder? It took place in a lane near Quarry Woods. I mean, she can't have been more than ten or eleven. And I where don't... is Nora Ambrose now? Mm, she left the school, took another post in the north of England. She was naturally very upset. The police never solved the crime? No. Um, look, I, I shall be late if I stay here any longer. I must go. Of course. Um, there is just one thing I need to ask you. Yes, what is it? I would be grateful if you could tell me how to get to Quarry House. If it's Colonel or Mrs. Weston you're after, they're away. Won't be back till next week. It is of no great importance. I simply wanted to know whether they would permit me to see the gardens. The gardens? Oh, did you mean Quarry Woods? Yes, Quarry Woods. Is it uh, possible to visit them? Oh, yes. They're open to the public without charge. You'll find the entrance along there on the left-hand side. There's an iron gate. Thank you. You're very kind. Uh, are you really going to walk around there in those shoes? Of course. You'll get wet feet. Quarry Woods. What an ugly name for such beautiful gardens. An enchanted place. Like something out of an ancient Greek legend. And as in all the best legends, there is something sinister about the place. In the midst of so much loveliness... There is fear. Are you looking for something? Oh. oh, looking for something? No, no, I simply wanted to look at the gardens. Am I trespassing? I don't think one could call it trespassing. Colonel Weston doesn't mind people walking around the place, so long as they don't do any damage. It doesn't look as if anyone comes here very much. You would think there would be children playing or lovers walking. Well, lovers don't come here. It's supposed to be unlucky for some reason. Are you by any chance the man who designed this garden? I am. My name is Michael Garfield. Mm -hmm. You look somehow as if you were part of the place. You must be very satisfied with what you have achieved here. Is one ever satisfied? You made it, I believe, for Mrs. Llewellyn Smythe. You seem to be remarkably well informed. Mm -hmm. Was she satisfied with this thing of beauty? Up to a point. I carried out my own ideas and convinced her that they were her own. It's not a very difficult art to learn. I have to sell my wares, as you, I presume, have to sell yours. Sell my wares? Investigation, detection, whatever you call it. Ah, you know who I am, then? 
News travels fast in a small community like this, and you don't exactly blend with the landscape. <laughs> You're trying to find out what happened at the Halloween party. Were you there? No. You were fortunate. Fortunate? To have been one of the guests at a party where a murder is committed is not a pleasant experience. People ask you times, dates, impertinent questions. You knew the child, Joyce? Oh, yes. I know most of the people living round here. What was she like? Uh, how can I put it? She was not important. She had rather an ugly voice, shrill. Really, that's all I can remember about her. I'm not particularly fond of children. Mostly they bore me. Joyce bored me. She was not interesting? I shouldn't think so. Does she have to be? It is my view that people devoid of interest are unlikely to be murdered. People are murdered for gain, for fear, or for love. One takes one's choice. But one has to have a starting point. But I have an engagement to fulfill and I am already late. Um, can you tell me how I get to Mrs. Butler's house from here? Mrs. Butler? That's quite simple. You follow that path and just keep going. Thank you. Goodbye. And uh, once again, my felicitations. Mr. Poirot? You are Mr. Poirot, aren't you? That is my name. I came to meet you. You are coming to tea with us. Uh, with uh, Mrs. Butler, yes. You're rather late. I'm sorry, I stopped to speak to someone. Yes, I saw you. You were talking to Michael. You know him? Of course. We've lived here quite a long time. I know everybody. Forgive me asking, but uh, how old are you? I'm 12. I'm going to boarding school next year. Oh, will you be sorry or glad? I don't really know until I get there. Huh. I don't think I like this place very much. Not as much as I did. I presume that you are Mrs. Butler's daughter. That's right. What is your name? Miranda. I think it suits you. Are you thinking of Shakespeare? Yes. Are you studying The Tempest at school? Miss Whitaker read some of it to us. I liked it. Oh, brave new world. There isn't anything really like that, is there? You don't believe in it? Do you? There is always a brave new world, but only, you know, for very special people, the lucky ones, the ones who carry the making of that world within themselves. I see. We go this way. You can go through the hedge of our garden. Huh? Through the hedge? Oh, yes. <laughs> That's where the fountain was, just over there. A fountain? Oh, years ago. I suppose it's still there, underneath the shrubs and azaleas and things. It was all broken up, you see. Seems a pity. You know this place very well. Do you often come here? Oh, yes. It's one of my favourite places. Nobody knows where I am, you see, when I come here. I sit up in the trees and watch things. I like that. What sort of things? Mostly birds and squirrels. They're very quarrelsome, aren't they? And do you watch people? Sometimes. But there aren't many people who come here. Mm -hmm. Why not, I wonder? I suppose they are afraid. Why should they be afraid? Because someone was killed here long ago. Before it was a garden, I mean. It was a quarry once. And then there was a gravel pile. That's where they found her. Do you think the old saying is true? About you're born to be hanged or born to be drowned? Oh, nobody is born to be hanged nowadays. You do not hang people any longer in this country. Joyce was drowned. Mummy didn't want me to know. But that was rather silly, I think. Don't you? I mean, I'm 12 years old. Was Joyce a friend of yours? Yes, she was. She'd tell me very interesting things sometimes. She'd been to India once. I wish I'd been to India. Joyce and I used to tell each other all our secrets. Who told you about Joyce? Mrs. Perring. That's our cook. Someone held Joyce's head down in a bucket of water. Have you any idea who that someone was? I wasn't there. I had a sore throat and a temperature. But I think I could know who it was. Because she was drowned. That's why I asked if you thought people were born to be drowned. We go through the hedge here. Ah. Be careful of your clothes. Ah. Mm. Oh. Oh. Oh, la, la. 
Here's Mr. Poirot. I got him all right. Miranda, you didn't bring him through the hedge, did you? You ought to have gone by the path at the side gate. This is a better way, isn't it, Mr. Poirot? And it is uh, certainly more direct. And more painful, I imagine. Uh, I did introduce you, didn't I? Uh, oh, to Mrs. Butler, of course. Please sit down, Monsieur Poirot. Merci. Ariadne and I met in Greece. Yes, I fell into the sea when we were coming back from one of the islands. <laughs> it had got rather rough. Judith helped fish me out and it made a kind of bond between us, didn't it? Besides, I liked your name. It seemed very appropriate somehow. <laughs> Nothing very Ariadne-like ever happened to me, I'm afraid. I've never been abandoned on a Greek island by a man I love. We can't all live up to our names. Oh, no, indeed. I can't see you in the role of cutting off your lover's head. What was his name? Holofernes. She thought it was her patriotic duty. She popped the head into a bag and carried it back to Bethulia. Hmm. Now, where on earth did you learn that from? Don't look at me. I didn't introduce Miranda to the gorier bits of the Apocrypha. It was Miss Whittaker. Mind you, it's not the sort of thing I'd do, cut someone's head off while they were asleep. How would you dispose of your enemies, Miranda? I should be very kind. I'd use a sort of drug that gives people euthanasia. They would go to sleep and have beautiful dreams, and never wake up again. Why don't you go and put the kettle on, Miranda, and see how the scones are doing? You just want to get me out of the way. <laughs> she is an astonishing child, Miranda. You have a very beautiful daughter, madame. Just like a wood nymph. One does not wonder that she spends so much time in the lovely gardens which adjoin your house. I wish she wasn't so fond of it sometimes. I'm frightened of her being there on her own, even if it is so close. That's why you've got to find out why this dreadful thing happened to Joyce, Monsieur Porio. But I'd better see about tea. Why don't you both take a stroll around the garden? It's lovely now. Why the St. Martin's summer? She is a very lovely woman, your friend Judith. If Miranda is a wood nymph, she is a water spirit. But something is giving her great concern. What do you know about her? Not very much, really. Her husband died a good many years ago in an air crash, I think. She was very broken up about it. Is Miranda her only child? Yes. Judith does some part-time secretarial work, but she doesn't have a fixed job. But it isn't Judith we should be talking about. How are you getting on? I am following up a number of past deaths. Why past deaths? The past is the father of the present. I have written the names down here in my notebook. Uh, Mrs. Llewellyn Smythe, wealth, au pair girl disappeared. What's an au pair girl got to do with it? Why did she disappear? Because she was about to get into some form of trouble. What sort of trouble? The kind au pair girls usually get into? Oh, no, 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 not at all. It was to do with a forged will. Or rather, a codicil in the au pair's favour. I don't see what that's got to do with the murder of poor Joyce. Neither do I, but it is interesting. Janet White. Who was she? She was a school teacher, a friend of Miranda's English teacher, Miss Whittaker. The one who taught her about chopping off Holofernes' head. Yes, but Janet White was strangled. And this next one, Leslie Ferrier. Who was he? A lawyer's clerk. He was stabbed to death, and he had a prosecution for forgery. Forgery again. So, where do we go from here? To take tea with Judith Butler. I mean, in your investigation. I have an appointment with Ferrier's former employers, Fullerton, Harrison and Ledbetter. They also happen to have been solicitors to Mrs. Llewellyn Smythe. Leslie Ferrier, you know. I'd nearly forgotten his name. It seems so long ago. The chap who got himself knifed. Yes, Mr. Fullerton, that is the man I mean. Well, I don't really know that I can tell you very much about him. It was some years ago. Killed near the Green Swan one night. No arrest was ever made, but I fancy the police had made up their minds about it. A crime passionnel? That was the theory of the time, jealousy. He'd been going out with a married woman. Her husband was the pub landlord. Quite a one for the girls, young Ferrier was. Most of them seem to be considerably beneath him in station, but then I'm old-fashioned. Was one of the girls responsible for his death, do you think, or was it uh, Mrs. Greenswan? I wouldn't like to say either way. I can't even be certain that it was jealousy. You mean it could have been something quite different? Oh, Ferry was a very unstable character. Mm, he had a criminal record, I believe. You found that out, have you? Yes, he had. But he was still young. I thought he deserved a second chance. Very admirable. He got mixed up with rather a doubtful crowd, too closely connected with fiddling transactions outside the law. 
I gave him a warning or two which I hope might do the trick, but there's a lot of corruption about these days. And you think that his death may have been connected with these illegal dealings? Quite possibly. These associations... Gangs is rather too melodramatic a term, but this is all supposition. There were no witnesses. Yet somebody might have seen it happen. Somebody quite unlikely. A child, for instance. Late at night, in the neighborhood of the Green Swan. It seems to me most unlikely. It does not seem unlikely to me. However, let us move on. There was a foreign girl who disappeared. Her name was Olga, I think. Olga Seminov. Not a very reliable character, I believe. No, she was not. I understand that she was companion or nurse attendant to Mrs. Llewellyn Smythe, who was a client of yours. Yes, she was. Mrs. Llewellyn Smythe had several girls in their position, most of them unsatisfactory. She was not one to suffer fools gladly, but Olga Seminov seems to have suited her rather well. Mrs. Llewellyn Smythe became very much attached to her. Unwisely, as it seems to have turned out, but doubtless you know all about that. I understand that Mrs. Llewellyn Smythe left quite a large sum to the girl. A most surprising thing to happen. And the whole thing was done without consulting or involving our firm, as she'd always done before. It was a codicil written in her own handwriting. The whole residue of her fortune was left to Olga Seminov in gratitude for the devoted service and affection she had shown her. I understand that the will was contested. Oh, scarcely any need for that. From the evidence of handwriting experts, it became clear almost immediately that the codicil was a complete forgery. Now, do you think that there is any possibility that Leslie Ferrier might have been involved? Ferrier? How do you mean? I understand that he had been convicted for forgery. Oh... I see. Yes, it crossed my mind, but there was nothing to link him with the girl. And the codicil was declared invalid? Oh, yes. The money went to the Drakes as it was always intended it should. I'm sorry to have kept you waiting, Monsieur Poirot. The Church Christmas Fate Committee, I'm afraid. These things always take much longer than they ought to. What can I do for you? Something more about that dreadful party? I'm afraid that it is... I wish I'd never had it here. Is Mrs. Oliver still staying with Judith Butler? Uh, she is, I believe, returning to London in a day or two. She's such a good writer. Has she any ideas herself? I mean, about who might have done this dreadful thing? I think not. And you, madame? I've told you already. I've no idea whatever. You are sure that you did not see something... Something quite small and unimportant, but which, on reflection, might seem more significant than it did at first. You seem to have something specific in mind, Monsieur Poirot. Some definite incident? You are quite right, madame. It is because of what someone said to me. Really? And who was that? A Miss Whitaker. You mean the woman who teaches at the Elms? Did she see something, then? It was not that she saw something. She had an idea that you might have. I can't think of anything I can have seen. It has to do with a vase. A vase of flowers. A, a vase of flowers? Oh, of course I remember. There was a big vase of chrysanthemums on the table at the angle of the stairs. Some of the flowers seemed to be drooping, and when I looked, there was scarcely any water in it at all. So I took it into the bathroom to fill it up. But there was no one in there. No one at all. Oh, no, 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 I did not mean the bathroom. There was an accident, I understand. The vase slipped out of your hands and fell into the hall below. Smashed to smithereens. I was rather upset because it had been a wedding present. It was very stupid of me. My fingers just slipped. Miss Whitaker was standing there in the hall below. Is that the incident she was referring to? Yes. Miss Whitaker wondered, I think, how you had come to drop the vase. She thought that something had startled you. Startled me? No, I don't think so. It just slipped out of my hands. I was pretty tired by then. The party seemed to have been going on forever. You are certain that you saw nothing... nothing unexpected? I didn't see anything. Everyone was in at the Snapdragon, except for Miss Whitaker, of course. Did you see someone, perhaps, opening the library door? The library door? Yes, I see what you mean. I could have seen that. No, I didn't see anyone coming out of the library, nobody at all. I see. You don't think it's possible that Miss Whitaker might have seen someone go into the library? 
How that did not occur to me. It's just a thought. She might have caught sight of someone going in through the library door, say perhaps five minutes or so earlier, and it might have suggested to her that I could have caught a glimpse of the same person. Some young man who might have strayed in from the outside. You still think that it might have been a young adolescent who committed the crime? I suppose I do. Though I haven't really thought it out. It's too terrible to think about. Who would kill a child like that? Someone, perhaps, who wanted to be safe. You mean because Joyce said she'd seen someone commit a murder? Yes. Joyce was really a very silly little girl. Not, I'm afraid, always very truthful. So everyone has told me. Forgive me for reviving this painful business, madame, but it seemed from what Miss Whittaker told me... Th Have you asked her if she knows anything? What do you mean, madame? I mean that if anyone knows about children round here, she does. She did not volunteer any information when I spoke to her. Perhaps people do not always tell you everything they know. It is possible. Have you spoken to Nick and Desmond? They were both at the party. Ah, now, that would be Nicholas Ransom and Desmond Holland. Charming boys. Always so eager to help out. They're studying at Medchester Technical College. They're bored with Mrs Brand, just past the church on the left. I don't see what else we can tell you. We've been over it all pretty thoroughly with the police. They seem determined to find some way of pinning the murder on one of us. It didn't get them very far. But I am not the police. I want to find out about something that happened at the preparations for the party. You both were helping Mrs Drake, I understand. Yes, we were. Uh, so far, I have interviewed cleaning women and helpers. I have heard the views of the police and the doctor. I have talked to the headmistress and to a schoolmistress who was present. Miss Whittaker? Yes, Miss Whittaker. Why do you ask? <laughs> Nothing, really. Sorry to interrupt. But now I want to hear the views of a younger generation. You have sharp eyesight and acute hearing. Your minds are not clouded by prejudice. You know I've got a police record. I know that, yes, but it is of no importance. The police seem to think it is. It does not interest me. What were you doing to help Mrs Drake? Well, the uh, lighting, mostly. Getting up ladders, hanging up fairy lights and pumpkins. And you did some photography, I understand. Yes, we did that beforehand, so that we could project the pictures for the girls to see in their mirrors. And who did you use for these photographs? Just ourselves, with a lot of makeup, wigs and beards and moustaches and all that. We kept them a bit out of focus, so they'd look more like spirit pictures. And the girls did not recognise you? Of course they didn't. They squealed and shrieked and thought they were really seeing the men they were going to marry. <laughs> mm. Now, can you tell me who else was there when you were getting ready for the party? Well, there was Mrs Drake, of course, and Mrs Butler. And Miss Whittaker. And a lot of girls who giggled like mad but did nothing. Can you remember which girls? Well, Anne Walters and poor Joyce. And her horrible brother, Leopold. He's a sneak. Mm. He eavesdrops and tells tales. A really nasty little customer. Mm. I understand that you heard Joyce Reynolds saying something about having seen a murder committed. I never heard that. Did she really? Didn't you know? That's what they're saying. I don't think we were around at the time. Where was she when she was supposed to have said it? In the drawing room, I believe. Oh, we were probably out on the stairs fixing the fairy lights. Now, as far as you can remember, did anything occur while you were in the house that struck you as uh, sinister or significant in some way? Something which probably nobody else would have noticed? No. no nothing. Just a lot of people rushing about and getting in one another's way. Do either of you have any theories? How do you mean? About who might have murdered Joyce? Yes. I mean something that you might have noticed that could lead you to a suspicion on uh, perhaps purely psychological grounds. At the party? At any time. Well, there is Miss Whittaker. Oh, I'm Miss Whittaker. <laughs> it's difficult to say exactly. She always looks as if she's trying to bottle up her feelings. And she behaved very strangely when that teacher was killed. Mm. How do you mean Janet Dwight? Yeah, they used to be very close, if you know what I mean. I thought that Nora Ambrose was her real friend. Oh, no. They just shared the house. But Miss Whittaker was always hanging around her, and then they had a row. Something to do with the boyfriend of Janet White's. Apparently, Miss Whittaker got jealous and made a dreadful scene. Oh, come on. That doesn't make her a killer. No, but it was pretty peculiar. She's really weird. She goes in for all that ritual magic stuff, ley lines and stone circles and all that. Hmm. That is very interesting. Now, tell me, I have heard there was a witch at the party. <laughs> oh, oh, Mrs Goodbody. Mm. <laughs> she was uh, telling fortunes. 
And she did dress up as a witch. But she's perfectly harmless, really. I can't imagine her killing anybody. Oh, yes, I was there right enough. It wouldn't have been Halloween without me. Oh. Do move Pie Wacket off your lap if you don't like cats. She'll be all over you. Yeah, no, no, no. It is, uh, it is quite all right. I always does the witches round here. I lent Mrs. Drake my ball for the party. Your ball? My witch ball. Bought it at a jumble sale. It's hanging up there by the chimney. Ah. Now, I understand you told fortunes at the party. Nothing to it in a place like this, where you always know who's going with who. Not much call for tall, dark strangers. Can you look in your witch ball and tell me who killed Joyce Reynolds? You've got it all mixed up. It's a crystal ball you're looking to see things, not a witch ball. If I told you who I thought it was did it, you wouldn't like it. Say it was against nature, you would. But lots of things go on that are against nature. What kind of things? Wherever you go, the devil's always got some of his own. Born and bred to it. You're not a young man. You know what goes on in the world. <sighs> You're right. I know only too well. Now, if Joyce really saw a murder committed... Who says she did? She said so herself. There's no reason for believing. She's always been a little liar. So everyone insists on telling me. She always wanted to make people believe she was cleverer than she was. She'd say anything to make folks sit up and take notice. They're a funny family, the Reynoldses. Take Leopold, for instance. Joyce's brother. He's clever, all right. You beware of Leopold. He finds out everybody's secrets. He's always got lots of money. Where does he get it from? That's what I'd like to know. Finds people's secrets out, I'd say, and makes them pay him for holding his tongue. None of this is of any help to you, I dare say. You have helped me a great deal. Now, can you tell me what happened to the foreign girl who is said to have run away? Didn't go far, in my opinion. Ding, dong, dell, puss is in the well. That's what I have always thought. Excuse me, ma'am. I wonder if I might speak to you for a moment. Are you sure I'm the person you want? Mrs. Butler is out, I'm afraid. I was just looking out for a friend of mine. Oh, no, ma'am. It's you I want. I saw you at the party. You're the lady who writes the stories about crimes and murders. Yes, I'm the one. I need your advice, you see. It's about Mrs. Llewellyn Smythe's will and the foreign girl who's supposed to have done the forgery. I see. I think you'd better come in, Mrs... Uh... Lehman. Mrs. Lehman. Come on in, then. We can talk in the drawing room. I used to do the cleaning for Mrs. Llewellyn Smythe ever since my poor husband died. Yes? Well, one day she calls me in, along with young Jim, who does the odd jobs about the house. And she's got papers in front of her on the desk. The foreign girl's there as well, but Mrs. Llewellyn Smythe sends her out of the room. Then she tells us to come up close and she says, This is my will, this is. She got a bit of blotting paper over the top part of it. I'm writing something here on this piece of paper, she says, and I want you two to be witnesses to it. And she signs her name and gets us to sign too and give our addresses. And then? That was all. She sent us away then. But as we were going out, I happened to turn my head and saw her put in the piece of paper into one of the books in the bookcase. And that made me curious, you see. So what did you do? Well, one day, when she'd been driven down into Medchester, I thought I'd take a look at what I'd signed. I felt I had a right to know. So you took the paper out and read it? That's right, ma'am. And what did it say? Well, I can't remember every word of it, but what it all boiled down to was she was giving her entire fortune to that girl, Olga, whatever her name was. And I thought, well, leaving all that money away from her own family. <laughs> then I thought she might have had a tiff with them and that as like as not, she'd tear it all up some day. And then... When all the fuss came up about the will and the talk about the girl having forged it... What did you do? That's just it. I didn't do anything. 
Not at the time. I didn't rightly see what it mattered. But now you feel differently. It's that nasty death. The child that was pushed into the bucket of apples, saying that she'd known something about a murder. It made you think. Oh, I wondered whether Olga might have murdered Mrs Llewellyn Smythe because she knew about the money that was coming to her. And I thought I ought to tell somebody. Somebody who'd know what to do about it. You look exhausted. Have you had a bad morning? Oh, simply a very trying one. Why don't you take your shoes off and rest your feet? No, 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 I could not do that. I have not. You know, you ought not to wear those patent leather shoes in the country. Oh. Why don't you get yourself a nice pair of suede ones? Suede? Well, all the kind you just slip on and never have to clean them. All sorts of people wear them nowadays. Hercule Poirot does not wear them. I would not care for that at all. The trouble with you is that you mind more about your clothes and your moustache than about being comfortable. And what is wrong with that? But I have not come here to discuss my personal appearance. I never thought you had. Are you making any progress? Oh, there are too many people who might have been in a position to commit the crime. No one seems to have the least notion who was present at the Snapdragon or not. Do you know anyone who was positively not there? Mrs Drake was not there, nor was Miss Whittaker. Well, the school teacher. Who may have had some sort of emotional involvement with her colleague Janet White, whose murder may have been witnessed by Joyce Reynolds. But there we have a little difficulty. What kind of little difficulty? Not a single person with whom I have spoken believes in the veracity of Joyce Reynolds. And yet, I am certain that that is why she was murdered. Because she had witnessed the murder of Janet White? If that was the murder in question. If it was not Leslie Ferrier whose death she saw. Leslie Ferrier? Yes, you know, the solicitor's clerk oh. who practised forgery and who was killed in what everybody believed was a fit of jealous passion. But I am beginning to have the idea that a lot of separate incidents might tie up more closely than anyone has thought. You said that this man was a forger? Yes. Everyone thinks that the au pair girl forged the will. But... I've got something to tell you about that. About an hour oh, wait, ago... Wait. Wait for what? Are you returning to London or are you making a long stay here? I was planning to leave the day after tomorrow. Tell me, in your flat, is there room for you to have guests? I have a spare room, if that's what you mean. Who do you want me to put up? It is just that it might be a wise precaution to take. What do you mean? Do you think that somebody else is going to be killed? I trust and pray not, but it might be within the bounds of possibility. But who? Tell me. How well do you really know your friend Judith Butler? Not all that well. It's just that we hit it off during the Greek cruise. There's something rather mysterious about her. Her and Miranda, as if they were mixed up in some interesting drama. Do you think they're in some kind of danger, then? I cannot be certain. Until I know whether or not one of my little ideas might be right. You and your little ideas. Now, I've got a piece of news for you about your forgery. And what is that, madame? If you promise not to have any more of your little ideas for five minutes, I'll tell you. You are certain of that? Me, Doherty? I see. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Fullerton. You have been most helpful. Mm. The codicil, the forged codicil that was declared invalid, was not witnessed by your friend Harriet Lehman, but by a May Doherty, now deceased, who had been in service with Mrs Llewellyn Smythe. So there was a forged codicil, and there seems to have been a real one as well. Mm. Isn't this all getting a little too complicated? Or was that Lehman woman simply telling me a pack of lies? It is always possible. Or did someone tell her to tell me a pack of lies? Hmm, an interesting thought. I'd like to know a bit more about this Olga Semenov. She certainly seems to have been very good at the Lady Vanishes Act. I hope to know more about that shortly. Or from her own country? Hmm. Will you find out whether she ever arrived back there? I might learn that. But I also hope to find letters written home while she was in this country mentioning friends she may have made here. What about the schoolteacher? Which one do you mean? The one who was strangled. Janet White? Now, didn't you say she was a friend of Miss Whittaker? Now, she struck me as being a very strange woman, very knowledgeable about the occult and that sort of thing. I wouldn't put it past her to have thought up a murder. Is that what you think? It has to exhaust all the possibilities. Quite so. But I must be on my way. Where are you off to now? I am going to visit my friend Superintendent Spence, uh, but I shall take a shortcut through the quarry garden. In those shoes? What do you expect to find there? 
something an old witch told me about. And do not concern yourself about my shoes. Miranda, turn your head a little more to the left. Like this? No, no, not, not, not so far. Uh, look over towards the beech tree. Yes, that's better. No, not that way. What's the matter with you? Monsieur Poirot's here. Uh, Hello, Monsieur Poirot. Uh, do not let me disturb you. I did not expect to find you sitting for your portrait. I didn't expect it either. It just happened. Uh, while you were walking in your favourite garden? I was looking for the well, really. Were you? It was supposed to be a wishing well. Michael knows where it is, but he won't tell me. It'll be much more fun for you to go on looking for it, especially when you're not at all sure that it really exists. Oh, Mrs Goodbody knows all about it. She said it was sealed up because it was supposed to be dangerous. A child fell into it years ago. You mustn't believe stories told to you by witches. I don't believe any child ever fell into it. It was probably just a cat. <laughs> Ding dong dell, pussy's in the well. I must go now. Mum will be wondering where I've got to. Au revoir, Monsieur Poirot. Au revoir, Miranda. Ding dong dell. Mm. Is she right about there being a well somewhere there, Mr Garfield? Oh, yes, there's a well here, all right. And she says it was sealed up years ago. I don't think it was ever a wishing well, though. I think that was Mrs Goodbody's invention. May I look at your drawing? Oh, of course. It's only a sketch. Ah, it is exquisite. So delicate. What made you draw it? Do I have to have a reason? You might have. Well, you're right, as it happens. If I go away from here, there are one or two things I want to remember. Miranda's one of them. Would you forget her so easily? Very easily. I like that. Are you really going away from here? I've thought of it, yes. After all, there's no reason why I should stay. I can find some other corner of the world, some quiet island. Uh, somewhere where you can transform nature, where you can play at being Adam. <laughs> I don't ask for much. A hillside with cypresses. Barren rock. You have been to Greece? <laughs> You're quite a mind reader. Yes, Greece was in my mind. Are you reaching the end of your investigation? I only wish I were. There are still many things I need to know. What kind of things? You have lived here some time, Mr. Garfield. Did you know a young man named Leslie Ferrier? Yes, I knew him. He came to a sudden end, did he not? Yes, somebody stuck a knife into him. The general opinion was that he was a woman. He was a great one for the girls. Were they only English girls? I shouldn't think he cared very much, so long as they could speak enough English to understand what he wanted. Was Olga Seminoff one of his girlfriends? Yes, I think she was. I don't know what he saw in her. She wasn't very beautiful. Why do you want to know about that? I will tell you, my friend, because Olga Seminoff was accused of forgery and because Leslie Ferrier was a known forger. You're suggesting that Mrs Llewellyn Smythe's will was forged by Leslie Ferrier? It seems a possibility, does it not? I suppose that could have been why the forgery was found out so easily. He can't have been very good at it in the first place if he was sent to prison for it. But why are you telling me all this? Why are you disturbing the peace and quiet of this place? Because there were things I wished to find out. And you have told me what I wanted to know. It's sometimes better not to know things, Monsieur Poirot. Better to leave them as they are. You want beauty. But for me, it is truth that is important. Keep the truth for your friends and the police and leave me to my beauty. Get thee behind me, Satan. Goodbye to you, Monsieur Poirot. You're out of luck, I'm afraid. My brother's gone down to the police station. Something's happened, I believe. So soon? What has happened? Tell me. I don't really know. The inspector rang up and asked him to go over. He didn't say what it was about. And there's a letter come for you. Foreign stamps on it. Ah. Here. Thank you. Uh, forgive me. It may be important. Why don't you sit down? I'll get you a cup of tea. No, 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 no. Thank you. You look fagged out. There's mud all over your shoes. <laughs> Was it the letter you expected? It is about the au pair girl, Olga Seminov. It seems that she never returned to her hometown, and there have been no letters for her. Oh, excuse me. Mm -hmm. uh, 2141? Yes, he's here. It's for you. The guest house. Ah, oh, thank you. Yes, Mrs. Hackney? Is there? Who is it? I see. 
Well, perhaps if you could give her a cup of tea and tell her I will return straight away. I will be as quick as I can. It seems that Mrs. Drake has come to see me in a state of some agitation. Forgive me, but I think I must go and find out what is the matter. She is normally such a self-possessed woman. You've heard what's happened? I have heard nothing, madame. What is it? What is the matter? He's dead. Murdered. He? Who is dead, madame? I have a terrible fear that it is all my fault. I thought I was acting for the best, and now he's dead. And he was only a child. Now, calm yourself, madame, and tell me, who is the child that is dead? Leopold, Joyce Reynolds' brother. Huh? How did it happen? They found him by the side of the brook. He must have been on his way home from school. Somebody had drowned him. Held his head down in the water. The way his sister was killed? Yes. And I thought I was doing the right thing. What thing, madame? In not telling you what I saw from the staircase when I dropped the vase. And what did you see, Mrs. Drake? I saw the door of the library open. He was starting to come out. And then he pulled the door to quickly and went back in. This was Leopold? And you see, I thought that was why I couldn't tell anyone. You thought what? That Leopold had killed his sister? Not then, of course. I didn't know she was dead, but afterwards... He had such a strange look on his face. I see now that he must have gone in there and found her dead. And yet you said nothing? Even after Joyce's death was discovered? Don't you see? I couldn't. I thought he, he's so young, he can't have known what he was doing. I thought the best thing I could do was to say nothing. If only I'd spoken out, he might still be alive. <laughs> only today I was told that Leopold had somehow got hold of a large sum of money. Somebody must have been paying him to keep silent. But who could it have been? I shall find out. It cannot be long now. We've got to leave for London at once. I've just had a call from Monsieur Poirot. What do you mean, we? What's going on? You, me and Miranda. Miranda especially. Monsieur Poirot says we've got to get her away from here immediately. But why on earth should we do that? She's in serious danger, particularly since what happened yesterday. Yesterday? You mean Leopold's murder? But what am I to tell her? You needn't tell her anything. Just say we're going up to London to stay at my flat. We'll take her to a theatre or to the ballet or something of that kind. Do you seriously believe that she's in danger? Poirot has thought so for some time, but now he's certain of it. Have you heard what's going on in Quarry Woods? No. What's happening? The police have been digging around there since early this morning. They're looking for something. Has this got anything to do with it, Harriet? I shouldn't be at all surprised. Miranda, we're going to London. Going to London? When? As soon as possible. Practically at once. Ariadne will run us up there in her car. We can stay in her flat. Perhaps we might go to the ballet. Would you like that? I'd love it. Then we'll pack a few things and go straight away. Aren't we going to have lunch first? For such an ethereal creature, Miranda, you're remarkably preoccupied with food. We can have lunch on the way. We can stop at the Black Dog. It's just outside Manchester. I must ring out one of my friends before we go, just to explain what's happening. All right, but be quick about it. I know your phone calls. Where did you say we'd be having lunch? The Black Dog. May I take your order, ladies? Could you come back in a minute or two? We're waiting for my daughter. Of course, madam. Miranda's certainly taking her time. Where's she got to? She said she was going to the ladies. You're sure she knows where the dining room is? Yes, of course she knows. Anyway, she can always ask. I'll go and hurry her up. Poirot? We've lost Miranda. What do you mean, lost her? We stopped at the Black Dog for lunch. She went to the loo. She hasn't come back. We can't find her anywhere. Somebody should have stayed with her. Neither of you ought to have let her out of your sight. I told you there was danger. Judith is frantic. She thinks we ought to ring the police. Of course you should. I will ring them as well. Call me as soon as you know where she has gone. Ariadne, I've just been talking to Nicholas Ransom. He and Desmond saw her getting into a car. Who was with her? Somebody with long hair. That was all they could see. Well, did they see which way she went? They're not very certain, but they think the car went down the road that leads to Kilterbury Ring. I've never been here before. It's so beautiful. Like something out of a dream. But it's frightening as well. What are these strange stones? They're the remains of an old stone circle. Kilterbury Ring. What were they put here for? To mark the passage of the seasons. For ritual worship. 
and for ritual sacrifice. The sacrifice? Is that why you've brought me here? You understand about sacrifice, don't you, Miranda? I think so. It is a kind of punishment. <laughs> Not just a punishment. A way of cleansing guilt and of making a gift to the gods. You die that others should live. You die that beauty should come into being. Is it because I told Joyce about the murder? Is that why I have to die? If she hadn't repeated what you told her, she'd still be alive. Is it my fault that she died? Then I suppose I deserve to die as well. You will die where men have sacrificed to their gods for thousands of years, Miranda. You will feel no pain. Hold the golden cup while I pour into it the wine of sacrifice. Now, drink deeply and become one with the past and the future. Through your sacrifice, a new beauty will be born. It smells of peaches. It's such a beautiful colour. Raise the cup to your lips and drink. Don't touch it, you silly little idiot. It's got nothing to do with you. Miranda! Go away! I must drink it. You'll do no such thing. Give it to me, Miranda. The police are out looking for you, Garfield. They found the girl's body in the well in Quarry Wood and they found your knife. Come away from him, Miranda. The man's a dangerous lunatic. Give yourself up, Garfield. They've already arrested your partner in crime. Then it is I that must be the sacrifice. My child shall live and dwell among the gods. Michael! Don't! Accept! My sacrifice! Don't let him drink it! Don't let him drink! What exactly did you tell Joyce, Miranda? That I'd seen a murder. And did you tell anyone else? No, but I think Leopold might have overheard what we were saying. He was always listening at doors. He liked to know other people's secrets. But Joyce did not see the murder herself. Oh, no. She was just repeating what I told her. So, what was the murder that you saw? I didn't know at first that it was a murder. I thought there'd been an accident. Where was this? In the quarry garden. I was up in the branches of a tree. I was looking for squirrels. I was trying to keep very quiet and very still. And what did you see, Miranda? A man and a woman carrying this girl up the path. I thought they were taking her to hospital... Or to the quarry house. Then the woman stopped suddenly and said, There's someone watching us. And she stared up at my tree. I kept very still. And the man said, Nonsense. And they went on. And then I saw there was blood on the girl's scarf. I thought she must have tried to kill herself. Why did you not tell your mother? I thought perhaps I oughtn't to have been there watching... And then the next day, nobody said anything about an accident. So I tried not to think any more about it. But what made you realise it was a murder? It was as though everything was happening all over again. This time I was trying to persuade a green woodpecker to come out from behind some bushes. And the two of them came by. They were talking about a Greek island. She said, we can go there as soon as we like. It's all ours. And he said something about not rushing things, or it might make people suspicious. And then? And then the woodpecker flew away. And she said, there's somebody watching us. And she had just the same look on her face. And somehow, I knew. I knew that it had been a dead body they were carrying away to hide somewhere. And can you say who these people were? Did you recognise them? Of course I did. And who were they? Mrs. Drake and Michael Garfield. And you still did not tell anyone? I thought... I thought it might have been a sacrifice. Why did you think that? Michael had been talking to me about sacrifices. But weren't you frightened of him? Weren't you afraid to be with him? Oh, no. Why not? I loved him very much, you see. I would have done anything he said. Huh. Thank you, Miranda. And now I think we had better tell all this to Inspector Raglan. But as I understand it, 
The police had already arrested Rowena Drake while Garfield was with Miranda at Kilterbury Ring. Was that your doing? Of course. But how could you be so certain, Monsieur Poirot? Because I use my little grey cells. It was really quite simple. If you hold down a vigorous child with its head in a full bucket of water, they will be struggling and splashing and you are bound to get wet. And that is what happened to Mrs. Drake. So, she had to account for getting so wet and she had to have a witness. She waited on the landing with an enormous vase of flowers filled with water. She knew she would not have long to wait. And, in due course, Miss Whitaker came out of the room where they were playing Snapdragon. It could have been anybody. And Mrs. Drake let go of the vase so that the water cascaded over her dress before falling into the hall below. And all the time, poor Joyce had never seen the murder committed at all. Mrs. Drake did not know that. But she always suspected that someone had been there in Quarry Woods when they were hiding Olga Semenov's body. Rowena Drake and Michael Garfield. They seem an unlikely pair. Was he in love with her, do you think? She had money and would have more when Mrs. Llewellyn Smythe died. And Michael Garfield was very interested in money. Money would buy him the means of creating his earthly paradise, his enchanted island. But I don't see why the Semenov girl had to be murdered in the first place. And where does the forged codicil come in? And who did it? Mrs. Llewellyn Smythe had very strict notions of morality. She found out that Rowena Drake was having a love affair with Garfield while her husband was still alive. In a fit of anger, she changed her will and left everything to the au pair girl. After the old lady died, the codicil had to be proved to be a forgery. The real codicil was suppressed. There had to be an obviously forged document to take its place, and Leslie Ferrier was just the man to do it. He was always in need of money. After that, he had to be eliminated. He was knifed late one night on his way home from the Green Swan with the same knife that was used to kill Olga Semenov. By Michael Garfield? By Michael Garfield. But how on earth did he discover that it was Miranda who had seen them in Quarry Woods and not Joyce Reynolds? She told him. What? She was completely under his spell. Even though she knew he was a murderer? Perhaps that only added to his fascination. I don't know. I think she fascinated him as well. In his way, I believe he loved her. But he was ready to sacrifice her to save himself, and she was prepared to be sacrificed. There was a very close bond between them. Was there not, Mrs. Butler? I don't understand you. I think you understand me very well. One had only to look at them together. He was her father, was he not? Yes. He was her father. But she did not know that. No, she had no idea. I knew him when I was a young girl. I fell wildly in love with him, and then I grew afraid. Afraid? Yes. I can't really tell you why. Perhaps it was his gentleness. I always felt that there was a coldness and a ruthlessness lurking behind it. I was afraid of his passion for beauty, of his desire to create a world of his own. He wanted to be a kind of god. I didn't tell him I was going to have his child. I left him. I went away and the baby was born. I invented the story of a pilot husband who was killed in an air crash. I came to Woodley Common more or less by chance. Meeting him here again was pure coincidence. But he realised that Miranda was his child. Oh, yes, he knew. And yet he was prepared to murder her. Let me show you something. This is a drawing he made of her by the stream in Quarry Woods. He told me he did it because he did not wish to forget her. See what he wrote on it. Iphigenia, the daughter of Agamemnon. And Agamemnon sacrificed his daughter so that the gods would give him a wind to take his ships to Troy. Michael Garfield would have sacrificed his daughter so that he could create his Garden of Eden. I must confess you've lost me over all this Garden of Eden business. Rowena Drake was hopelessly infatuated with Michael Garfield, but there was a high price to pay for his love. Nothing more or less than a Greek island purchased with her inheritance from Mrs. Llewellyn Smythe. Once he realised that it could really be his, nothing, not even Miranda, was allowed to come between him and his ambition. 
Did he suddenly realise the full horror of what he was doing, do you think? Was that why he seized the cup from Miranda and drank the poison himself? It was a fitting death. As he said, a sacrifice was needed. And on that sombre note, I shall take my leave of you both. Goodbye, Mrs. Butler, and remember me to your daughter. She ought to remember you always for what she owes you. Uh -huh. I think not. Some things are better forgotten. Au revoir, Ariadne. You belong in a different myth. A myth in a maze. It has been a most interesting case. Thank you for drawing me into this particular maze. That's right. Blame it all on me as usual. In Halloween Party by Agatha Christie, Hercule Poirot was played by John Moffat and Ariadne Oliver by Stephanie Cole. Judith Butler, Alexandra Bastido, Miranda Butler, Sean Jenkins, Rowena Drake, June Barry, Michael Garfield, Gareth Armstrong. Spence, James Taylor, Elspeth, Oriel Smith, Miss Whitaker, Amanda Murray, Miss Emlyn, Petra Davis. Mrs. Lehman, Paula Jacobs, Mrs. Goodbody, Lala Lloyd, Mrs. Minden, Catherine Parr, Fullerton, Colin Pinney. Mrs. Reynolds, Rachel Atkins, Leopold Reynolds, Sam Crane, Joyce Reynolds, Sophia Nemeth, Anne Reynolds, Vivian Rochester. Nicholas, Nicholas Bolton, and Desmond, Peter Kenny. Halloween Party was dramatised for radio by Michael Bakewell and directed by Ennard Williams.